Hello everyone, in this video I want to do something a little different. I just really wanted to focus on the sculpting and just talk over it instead of talking in real time. So I think it's going to be just as uh, helpful. So in this uh, case, I'm building this uh, crazy belt or um, almost like a metal armor uh, female, you know, uh, underwear kind of thing. So to, to get this going, I was thinking about maybe I should do it in um, Maya because I like to do my uh, hard surfacing stuff in Maya, but just to challenge myself and do something different I wanted to do it in uh, ZBrush. It's just as uh, fun and just as easy. So to get started on this kind of a very unique uh, shape and by the way this concept art is from uh, Mario. I'm going to include his link um, in my description as well. Uh, if you watched my previous videos, you know that uh, he's a concept artist that I like and he gave me permission to use any uh, of his art. So that's what this is, it's just one of his concept arts, uh, art pieces. And um, so to get this middle piece done, uh, I just grabbed a cylinder and just started using uh, H polish, which is phenomenal. It's full on uh, magic to turn uh, anything into hard surface that's kind of organic and different looking. It's a must. Uh, it's a must-use brush um, for that. So again, I just grabbed a cylinder and uh, positioned it into uh, place, and just uh, kind of started using the reference to attempt to match the uh, the angles and the shape uh, of this piece. And obviously, um, I'm only focusing on the big, uh, large shapes. Here, um, I turn on the um, polyframe to look at the topology to see that in order for me to do more kind of a bevel uh, effect I needed to Z remash it that's what I'm doing here uh, to change the topology so I have more uh, freedom um, and more right more uh, resolution so for the bevel I just grabbed uh, to add kind of a bevel effect um, after using the H polish I'm using trim dynamic to just kind of um, going you know just going over the edges and the, tr the difference between trim dynamic and H polish if in case you're new to ZBrush um, H polish will kind of give you really sharp flat surfaces between the two angles so kind of like if you want to create a 90 degree sharp edges that's what H polish will do and then trim dynamic will uh, give you a lot more freedom it's it's literally dynamic right so it you can go uh, over those 90 degree angles and add a bevel. So usually you want to do something, uh, you know, you usually want to use both of those brushes to achieve the effect that you want. All right, and then uh, obviously as I'm smoothing stuff, it, it begins to look a little more blobby, which uh, is not uh, preferable and it's easy to fix uh, to maintain those sharp edges you could just use uh, clay polish in your geometry and you can control that edge uh, amount if you want to make it you know sharp or not as sharp but clay polish will kind of find those edges and sharpen them up if you if you begin to work on something and it starts to look kind of uh, blobby and less hard surfacey right just a cool uh, trick and at this point, I was happy with the major uh, angles and shapes. And so now I'm just using kind of a larger move brush to um, sculpt this into a closer uh, shape of what the reference is, right? The next thing that I wanted to do is add those um, cones right and there's a few probably a few different ways you could do it you could maybe use a primitive brush and just insert a cone or you can just append one um, from uh, ZBrush that's just as easy right you can just append a new shape and then uh, what I'm gonna do here is kind of scale it to the uh, size that I want and then just do control D to subdivide it to match, again, uh, the reference a little better. Okay. 
And you know, uh, for me personally, normally I do a lot of uh, concepting as I uh, model. So it's it was really uh, fun to have a reference so I could just focus on the shapes and not kind of use part of my brain, try to invent what the concept is. So um, I like to do both. If you watch my videos, you will see that I do that a lot. But uh, in this case, it was really cool to have a very precise uh, reference, character reference uh, for this. All right, so once I uh, aligned and duplicated these three cones, I was looking at them and uh, I wanted to make them not so sharp and perfect. And to, to achieve that, uh, the best way is just, just grab the inflate brush and just kind of inflate the cones once they're subdivided. And that will get rid of that super sharp uh, edge on the very top or the corner, right? And it also allows you to play around with um, kind of a, you know, kind of warping the cone into more of an organic feel, right? So it's not so perfectly straight. Um, that's what, that's the reason I'm using Inflate here. All right, so next I wanted to create that little connection piece that you see in the reference. It's like a little pink uh, panel. To do this, um, I just subdivided the main sh cylinder a couple times, and that allowed me to use my masking and gave me a uh, higher resolution to mask out kind of a little panel there on the very top. And then, um, I could just use masking and then uh, extract extraction to pull out the thickness of the panel that I uh, that I liked. Once the panel was extracted, it created a new layer, and then um, I also wanted to make sure that. It's, it doesn't have too much resolution because I didn't need all that, um, you know, extra wobbly stuff to, to make it, I needed to make it more clean and straight. And to do that, the best way to do it to quickly achieve uh, clean hot surfacing is just to Z remash it and then subdivide it, right? So that's what I, that's what I did here. And just using the move brush, I'm just trying to uh, mash the shape in the reference just a little bit better. Then again, just uh, using Trim Dynamic and H Polish uh, will allow me to kind of shape it a little more. All right, so once I was happy uh, with how that was looking, I um, started just masking out the rest of the shape. Just simply using control and uh, drawing, right, will allow you to mask out. And you just have to make sure that your model is subdivided enough to give you enough resolution for the masking. 
So in this case, uh, the base mesh is currently at 1 million uh, points. So you can see that uh, when I'm masking, it's giving me nice uh, enough resolution to kind of give me the, the precise shapes that I want. Now I'm only focusing on these big uh, main shapes initially, at least in, in, in uh, here so far. Uh, all that armor on top um, could be done. You don't really have to, if you have a character with a similar kind of uh, structure, you don't have to um, actually model that out. Um, if you wanted to, uh, if you look at the stomach, you know, the stomach part and you have like those metal plates, you could just use Damien's standard brush or a chisel brush and just uh, create angles and just do lines uh, that way, right? Because it's, it doesn't really, um, it, you know, it doesn't really protrude out too much. It's, it could be flat. So it could be part of, almost part of the skin. I hope that makes sense. So in, in this uh, tutorial, I'm just focusing on things that are uh, large shapes, right? So that, that need actual geometry. Now I don't have the back reference from uh, Mario, so I'm kind of just doing some assumption of what this uh, might look like on the back. And I just added like a little extra panel there. Once I finish the masking, um, I'm just using the extract to pull out the geometry and you can control the smoothness and the thickness. Uh, you can see it, at this point it's 0 0.02 to get that thickness that I thought made sense. Here I'm just think, taking the, uh, the shape, the extracted shape and bringing it down in the list. So. Um, I can kind of keep it with the rest of the elements, right? The spikes and uh, the initial uh, cylinder shape. And to uh, clean up some of these more organic uh, angles and shapes, uh, I'm just using, again, H polish to just flatten that area. And you can see how H polish is respecting those 90 degree angles. It, it, it doesn't, uh, it's not messing those up, which is, this is the, uh, amazing thing about H polish it will keep that connection that that edge that angle now I see some uh, cleanup that needs to be done in the back um, I did not get to that in this video but that's something I'll take care of Next, I wanted to uh, create that cutout that you see in the front. And for that, I had to delete the, uh, the levels, the subdivision levels of the main shape. And uh, if you do, then you can use the, uh, the knife tool to kind of cut out the shape that you need. That's what uh, I did here. And then to add, to add that extra uh, little piece that you can see in the reference, that light pink one, I just uh, grabbed the box and just simply sized it. Now oh, there's a few different ways you could uh, take it from here. You could Z remesh it and uh, that will give you um, enough geometry if you wanted to do additional uh, cuts and slices. Uh, in this case, because I knew I'm going to be slicing it, um, I didn't really care about the topology too much, right? This is not obviously, uh, I'm just going to say this for a uh, new artist, um, everything that you're seeing here is considered a high resolution uh, sculpt. So this is not game ready uh, geometry, right? You're, uh, you're only in this situation, you're, I'm only uh, sculpting the concept art, and then once that's all done, the next step would be going over and cleaning up the topology 
and doing uh, creating kind of a game ready uh, frame, right? So this is just sculpting uh, part steps where, you know, just to get the main shapes. All right, here I just grabbed the uh, H polish because you can see in the reference that um, kind of a armor feels a lot more angular, right? There's some gradients that you can see uh, with the colors and it looks more metally, right? Not so smooth. So using uh, H polish, if you just press it very lightly, you can achieve kind of this metal beat up almost uh, feel to it. Next, I'm gonna work on that little uh, spike on the side, on the hip. So very simple, it's just a, looks like just a cylinder with a little spike on top. Once it's in place, you can just do a mirror and weld and that will, uh, put both items on the same layer, right? And uh, to create the uh, cone, I just grabbed one that already, already exists so, so it matches instead of creating a new one. Again, you can just use mirror and weld to flip the cone to the other side. And one thing I just want to point out is once you do your uh, big uh, shapes, you know, you might spend, you know, 50% of your time, for example, um, pulling out the large main shapes and maybe getting them close to your uh, references, but then I would say the other 50% of the time, if not more, is when you uh, really want to dial in uh, and very carefully make small adjustments that um, that you know that take the shape to the next level. And uh, usually, something like that cannot be uh, rushed. And a lot of times, it's actually pretty tough to do when you're doing a tutorial because you want to cover the main skills and main uh, you know main tools that you're using and you don't really leave too much room for kind of a micro detail to, to really go in there and no one wants to see you, you know, pull a vertex for 20 minutes, but sometimes that's what it takes. And uh, I just want to point that out to uh, anyone who is new. All right, so thank you again uh, so much for watching and I'll see you next video.